I testified in front of Congress about something so simple, cameras in courtrooms. He came in late, he looked disheveled, and he immediately was screaming and yelling and terrorized me and the other experts on the panel. And describing him as a terrorist is exactly that. He's a chaos agent, and it came out of nowhere, and he had no command of the subject that we were talking about, which made it even scarier. All right, guys, so we're probably going to be doing a whole lot of talking about Jim Jordan, especially the current smear campaign against him, not just coming from Democrats, but also coming from Republicans as well, too, okay? Because a lot of these people are claiming that Jim Jordan is harassing them or Jim Jordan supporters are harassing them and issuing threats and all types of crazy stuff. Uh, that just means that, hey, the constituents, the base, the people, the people that they're supposed to answer to, they're simply demanding that their congressman or congresswoman do what they were voted into office to do, which is the will of the people. So apparently uh, the people asking the GOP representatives to do what the people elect them to do is a form of hate and harassment, according to them. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh that probably in a later video today i'm not going to squeeze it in this video because this video is about the mainstream liberal media and their smears against jim jordan uh particularly the smear that has come from sonny holston who on at least three separate occasions in recent weeks uh has went on her show to view and claimed that she was terrorized and yelled at by jim jordan however uh, footage shows that this is not necessarily the case, that Sonny Holston is actually lying. So I want to go ahead and get into that and show you what Sonny Holston said and then show you guys the video from the congressional hearing in which she claimed that Jim Jordan walked in disheveled and he started spitting and yelling at her and just making up stuff, okay? I'm going to show you guys that. But first, we have to have a word from the sponsor of this video noble goal do you want to take control of your financial future but you don't know where to start well trust me noble goal understands investing in precious metals may sound confusing but the team at noble goal investments makes it easy let's hear from actual noble goal investment customers quote the staff answer all my questions and help me every step of the way quote no pressure sales tactics just honest guidance Quote, securing my future is less stressful thanks to Noble Gold's expertise. Don't settle for financial uncertainty. They'll suggest options to see if you can diversify into gold and silver. And right now, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free 5-ounce silver America the Beautiful bullion coin for qualifying accounts and rollovers. Don't settle for financial uncertainty. Noble Gold Investments has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and countless of five-star reviews. So why wait? Go to noblegoinvestments.com. That's noblegoinvestments.com. The only gold company I trust. And just remember, there's a risk with every investment and there's no guarantee of any kind. I will just say about Jim Jordan, you know, um, he has been called by his own party, by John, John Boehner, a political terrorist. He's also been linked to the Ohio State sexual abuse scandal. I testified in front of Congress about something so simple, cameras in courtrooms. He came in late, he looked disheveled, and he immediately was screaming and yelling and terrorized me and the other experts on the panel. And describing him as a terrorist is exactly that. He's a chaos agent and it came out of nowhere and he had no command of the subject that we were talking about, which made it even scarier. So to have him, the thought of him being the Speaker of the House, I think leads to more chaos for But his country. role model is Donald Trump, who has no command of the language either. If Republicans primary those members with somebody right wing, those seats will go to Democrats. Well, Republicans will lose the House majority. It is nonsensical what the House is doing. They cannot get their act in order. And frankly, we're going to deserve it if we lose next time. So they're being self-destructive. It's incredibly yeah. self-destructive. It's so chaotic. I yeah. mean, karma doesn't lose anyone's address. And I'm kind of enjoying <laughs> it in a sense because um, I've had my own personal interaction with Jim Jordan where he terrorized me. Really? Was, yeah, when I was testified in front of Congress, oh, he yeah. was 
like spitting. He was yelling at me so much that he started spitting. Uh yeah, so you seen that, you heard that, okay? Um, that is what Sonny Holston's saying. Again, this is in the wake of the battle that Jim Jordan is having to be Speaker of the House. And again, her smear campaign against Jim Jordan is that, well, he walked into the meeting uh, disheveled and he started spitting at her and terrorizing her and her colleagues, except the fact that we have this congressional testimony on video. And if you review the video, the video shows that uh, Jim Jordan did not yell at her. He wasn't spitting at her. He didn't come in disheveled. Uh, in fact, he actually never, ever spoke with her, right? He actually did not speak with her or ask her any questions during this hearing. And I actually want to play a quick clip here for you guys and show you um, what Sonny Holston said during this testimony and the immediate aftermath of it. And the fact that none of the things that she claimed happened actually happened. It won't be a second round on uh, this line. Heck, of it inquiry. won't. No, it won't. And I want the gentleman to know well, that, that the next time the he chairman, comes in, the chairman, I want the gentleman well, one more, no, no, one more no, no, question no, no. I want the gentleman to know that the next time he comes into my subcommittee and disrupts it in this way. How is this disruptive? That we, yeah, it, it, because you're off topic. And so when no, this, if this should happen again, I'm going to be prepared yeah. Uh, through our rules to hold you accountable and with that mr chairman the rules allow that, me to ask the questions i want to ask the only thing disruptive that, here is your behavior in limiting and interrupting my question it was my five minutes you interrupted i got one more question with, with, that i would appreciate being able to with, ask the witness with that the gentleman is no longer recognized and i will proceed that's to, how the democrats are going to i will proceed to uh round two of the questions uh and I have a question for Ms. Huston and Mr. Tubin. I think there is no question that providing more transparency uh, will help that. Um, and this is purely anecdotal, but I had the opportunity to interview uh, Justice Sotomayor recently in New York about two weeks ago at the 92nd Street Y uh, uh, regarding her new book, her children's book. The audience uh, was a sold out audience. It was filled to capacity. And I can tell you while we did not address any current political issue, any current legal issue, uh, as per the justices' wishes, there was a line around the block of people that could not get in to the event and they also waited for three hours, those that were admitted to the event, for her signature on the books and just to meet her. And I stayed the entire event and what I heard over and over again was, she just seems like a regular person. She's so wonderful, she's so warm. They just wanted to get to know her. And I think given an experience um, like that, if more Americans were able to just uh, see the justices on television, just to see them doing the business of the court. If we were able to pull back the curtains, I think as uh, my friend Jeffrey Tubin said earlier, um, we would get that reaction more and more and more. I mean, I think Justice Brandeis said it very clearly, sunlight is the best disinfectant. I think we would have much more um, trust in our system if people were able to see the justices and get to know them and see the business of the court. Mr. Chairman, I have a somewhat different view. The witnesses for coming to... Uh, for ...diminished respect for the court. I see public access to the court as, sort of, as an independent value. I don't really see it as an instrument to make the court more popular. I think it's a good thing in and of itself. Uh, for, I'm sorry, I want to thank the witnesses for coming today. Mr. Chairman, you get two that, rounds of questions. And I... We were told there was a adjourned. second round of questions. This is truly unbelievable the way you guys do this. Yeah, so you seen that, you heard that, okay? What you just saw there, for any of you guys that were confused, I, I cut down the video, uh, the question, because I didn't want the video to go on for too long. It's pretty boring, okay? But basically, 
uh, Sonny Holston uh, was asked a question about cameras in the courtroom. Okay, this is basically what the question was. Okay, and uh, this came after Hank Johnson and Jim Jordan got into a spout, an argument about Jim Jordan being able to continue to ask questions even though his time wasn't up, right? Jim Jordan felt like, hey, I'm not able to ask my questions because, you know, my time is not up. I, I should be able to ask at least one more question for, for the witnesses. Now, at no point did Jim Jordan talk to Sonny Holston, address Sonny Holston at all. Now, again, this is a whole nine, you know, 10-minute video here, okay? Uh, again, obviously, I can't play the whole thing, but at no point did Jim Jordan actually talk to Sonny Holston, at all, right? At all. But according to Sonny Halston, she was terrorized and yelled at, and he was spitting everywhere. He was disheveled. Again, I'm not sure. Look at Jim Jordan. How does he look disheveled? He has a tie and a collar shirt on. This is not disheveled, right? This is this is this is how you normally dress to go to work. Now, again, you know, uh, we got a fool in Congress. John Fetterman, who comes to work every day, disheveled, right? And, I mean, I, I believe she actually does have a problem with that. But still, that's not what Jim Jordan uh, was doing here, okay? So, not only did he not yell at her, he didn't spit at her or anything like that. He, he didn't even talk to her, okay? Now, again, it's just amazing to me how Sonny Holston is allowed to lie, right? She's allowed to go on national television and lie and to spread these false accusations against Jim Jordan and ABC has not punished her or made her issue a retraction for what is clearly a lie that was caught on camera, right? You know, it's just amazing to me how she felt so terrorized by Jim Jordan, but yet Jeffrey Tubin, right, is her friend, okay? The guy that is a serial masturbator, apparently, got caught on camera, you know, choking his chicken, right, doing a bit, doing a work meeting, okay, uh, not uncomfortable with that guy, and sitting next to her so-called friend, right, but she's uncomfortable with Jim Jordan, Jim Jordan just being in her presence, apparently that's what terrorized her, because I couldn't find anything in the footage of Jim Jordan terrorizing her, or addressing her, or even talking to her at all, so uh, ABC uh, needs to force uh, Sonny Holston to issue some type of retraction or some type of apology to Jim Jordan because she made that up. And why is this a big deal? Because this right here is in the same vein as when women falsely accuse men of harassment or, you know, some type of sexual misconduct. That's what this is, right? That's what this is. Again, it's not to that level because she didn't necessarily accuse him of any type of sexual misconduct, but essentially th this is kind of how you get to that point, right? Where she takes an interaction that did not involve her, right? Jim Jordan never interacted with her at all. And she goes on national television and tries to paint the man as some type of predator, okay? Or some type of, you know, harasser or whatever. When the video evidence shows that that just didn't happen, right? That just was not the case. So yeah, she should be severely punished for this, right? She Honestly, she should be fired. She should be fired because she know damn well that that never happened. And I don't understand how can you even extrapolate or even understand how she could see it that way based off just looking at the footage in which, again, <laughs> he never interacted with her at all. So again, she should be fired for this. Again, for all the stuff, for all the nonsense that she spewed on that show, in my opinion, this is the absolute worst because, again, this is how men lose their livelihoods. This is how their reputations are ruined. This is how they're smeared as some type of predator because of these type of false accusations from women like Sonny Holston. Again, this is absolutely unacceptable. It is unacceptable, okay? So uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.